Hello everyone, and welcome to this assembly and painting video for King Death Monsters The Hand. In this video, I will be going over my thoughts and techniques about this model, both the assembly itself, how I, you know, for example, thought the shoulder pads here were knees, and various techniques and ideas that I use for the painting itself. So, first, after assembling the whole body itself, which was only two pieces, and having the stumble that I've pointed out of, <laughs> oh, those are not knees, those are shoulders, which I don't think I figured out it by this point. I then attached the legs, which are oddly attached. Honestly, I still feel that this model's legs are not on proper for my personal copy, and that one of his legs is still crooked. I may have actually popped them off and put them back on, but... Here's me dry fitting the shoulders to actually assemble it. And they ended up fitting quite nicely, particularly because of the collar, which you'll see attached next, ends up fitting because the shoulders plus the front and back of the top parts of the body end up making the spot for, as you can see now, the collar itself. And it was amusing how well that was designed, honestly. Now, the arm here, I knew how to attach because before I had gotten a copy of the game, I had come across a post of somebody not knowing where the arm was or would go, and they thought that that was not their hand, but just the arm itself. The sword and the left arm, being one piece, attached very nicely. Now, the crown here, or crown-ish piece, if I'm correct, it's not on square. I might be thinking of my version of the Kingsman, but it's not too crooked either. It's a little annoying when you look at it up close, but in this video, or hands length, you, arms length, I should say, you won't see it. Now, here's the base itself, and then a quick glue it to the base. He stayed on quite nicely, even though said crooked feet. Still not as bad as one of the sets of legs from magnetized models. Now, for the painting itself, in the base coat, the entire thing, I have sped up the video more than I usually do. Because you're about to see an example of why I do a slot base coat, or more precisely, why I don't do a precision base coat. Because it takes forever. This model should have gone a lot faster because I should have just slapped colors on and then fixed it up later. I understand it's a little bit of a waste of paint, but it gets it done quicker. I know that this model had a lot of time where I took breaks in between it of weeks before finishing it. This is the model that of the core game monsters that actually took the longest. So I started off with the black for the pants. Then I moved on to a blood red color for the various tapestries. In it. Figuring out how to paint the hand was a problem unto itself. I eventually came to the conclusion that the hand being a unique monster, there is only one of them as per the setting in Kingdom Death, and he has been existing for a long time and is probably one of the higher ranking monsters at that. Um, if you know how his fight goes, you know how much he's just showing off. But it had dawned upon me, looking closer at the model, that he is his outfit is probably made of the three quarry monsters, amongst other things, that being the white lion using fur, the screaming antelope for leather, and the phoenix itself for various things of, you know, grander nature. So here's a little bit of purple being used for the cloth that is basically a shirt under the armor that its cuffs are poking out between the armor for the forearms and for the gloves. And then here is a more fine shirt worn over the armor being painted in blue. Again, a lot of little colors are used for this model, and it is just a tapestry of colors. I apologize about the brightness of the uh, light on the thing. It will make the gray that I will start painting on this soon very hard to see, but painting the yellow, which ends up, I ended up using more of it to begin with. As you can see here, uh, I've cut out painting the cloak originally, and I'm now just repainting it, as I want the cloak to look like it's 
cloth that's been woven with strands of gold. And I decided originally on yellow and went, no, that's going to hide the gold too much. And then changed to orange. So here I am repainting the cloak just real quick. And this more got sped up because like I do with the larger portions of models, it's just a large area. Nothing detailed to it. So then I move on to a brass-ish, brass bronze-ish color as a base coat for the things that will eventually be gold. I do this on all the models that I do like this. Uh, I will also be doing the same on the Gold Smoke Knight. But this is a paint I don't really like using because no matter what, I either have to apply it extremely thickly and risk losing detail, or I have to do two or three coats minimum. So it ends up a bit of a pain, honestly, especially since this is a lot of the model. The model is almost entirely gilded with various filigrees and such, to the point in which there are actually some gems on there, but you'll see those later. So it ends up being the crown, the chest plate, the boots, or at least most of the parts of each of those. Oh, and the faceplate of the helmet itself. And as you can also see, the gauntlets. I think I later realized that I also needed to paint the fingers. So here is, I believe, again, I can't tell myself to begin with, but I'm guessing based on where I'm painting because of the light, that this is the bone. Bone ends up being another very integral part within this model, in my opinion. Like, a lot of things are not sculpted out of metals. They are sculpted out of bone, and then the chest piece itself is metals made to look like bone. Even the scabbard looked like it was made of bone, so thus you see me painting it here. And the hilt and pommel of the sword are definitely bone. But even its knees are bone, minus the gold plate on the front. So it ends up being a decent chunk of the model. Probably the second most used color in terms of detailed areas. Third most if you're counting the cloak itself. Even the crown around, and I believe the brain-like cap on the top. <laughs> yes, there it is right now. Now, moving on to a tiny detailed section. These are the gems that I mentioned themselves, as I am painting them in finite detail, even though there are only four of them. Two red, two green. Then we move on to the ink wash. The ink wash was actually very simple for this because there were so many recesses for it to just well up in and just sit there. It wasn't a lot of, oh, hey, here's areas where I don't want it to pull up like you will see on the scabbard itself at first, which I do clean up later, but you'll see. Uh, the bones came out very nice. This, this was another model that, like the butcher, I felt... It looks somewhat like putty until it was inked, and then the details started shining out, and there's the welling that I was referring to, in this case, on the side of it. And in the case of this, with everything being so bright, it made it so that the colors would be more dull and thus better prepared for the highlight, which is the main reason I usually soak a model entirely in just black ink rather than some colored ink. I'd rather go with black and then adjust for other colors. Then on to said highlight, starting with orange to bring out the red some more because I did go with my brightest red and I wanted them to look more vibrant. I didn't want to go with gold like I do with the cloak because at the end of the day, that's not what it is. At least that's what I recall doing. I may have done gold, but as you can see, it's very clear that it's gold on the cloaks, on the cloak uh, itself. And also, everything that's intended to be gold. So this ends up being, without question, the most used paint for the highlight coat, which is just a very quick brush over everything. Um, again, for those that don't know, highlighting is meant to bring out the colors, so you should be using your brightest color that you want for that area, and it should only be touching the edges and things like that, or areas that you actually want to look like it glows. Uh, this is one of the few models in Kingdom Death that doesn't have some form of dynamic lighting in it, so although arguably the little tassels 
could be lanterns in themselves, but I didn't go with that myself. Then some highlighting with a skyish blue for the blue cloth, gray to bring out the details of the black pants, which is usually what I do with black surfaces unless I want them to shine in another color. The purples, I real quickly use a dark pink because honestly that's what makes a good purple come out unless you have an actual light purple, but sometimes that just comes out as pink. And then the second most used highlight color in this model, white, because it is used both for the bone and for the gray that makes up the fur. Now, usually when I'm painting things gray, that specific shade of gray, I want it to actually look white. So it's just the next darkest color I have. It's a very off gray, off white kind of color, but hey, it works. Something I've been using for a while, honestly. And white can be an, an amazing color for getting a lot of things to highlight, but sometimes it will just clash with things, like it wouldn't have looked good on the orange or any of the gold itself. But it makes a lot of things stand out very nicely. Uh, I've used it a little bit on the yellows, but I think I had changed my mind and wanted it to stay more of a yellowish color, and I ended up changing it later. A little bit of touch work here and there and then back to the gems using an even brighter shade than I did before and not applying as much of a detail. Like I'm genuinely trying to dry brush it, but you can only do so much with something that small. And then here's the yellow that I was set talking about. Oh, I forgot, he does actually have a lantern on his hip. So yes, yeah, some dynamic lighting is used, but very little and just around the waist. And here is the completed model. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you found this video helpful, please feel free to press the like button. If you think this video will help somebody else, please share this video. Either way, you'll help get it seen more. If you didn't like this video, go ahead and press the dislike button. I won't mind, but please leave a constructive comment as to why. Also, feel free to comment in general, such as if you want to see any of my models painted for my unboxing videos, or if you want any or if you have any questions on how I painted this, I am more than willing to cover those in more detail and direct answers to your questions. And if you want to see more like this, such as my painting videos, my unboxing videos, my board game overview videos, all three of which I do for Kingdom Death Monster, and anything else that I might do on this channel, feel free to subscribe. Regardless, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.